Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and our co-host, Anel, isn't here today. He wasn't here for the last couple episodes, and he's not going to be here for the next couple episodes either. He's kind of like on a bit of a vacation, but he will be back after that. And we're, we're definitely, you know, still doing our live call-in show in Manhattan, Channel 56 on Time Warner. Okay, call, it's called No Free Will, every Wednesday night at 11 p.m., except we're, we're live every other week. You know, every other week we actually present one of these shows, which is cool. Okay, so this is like episode number 91, and it's called No Free Will Off the Cuff number 7. And these, these, this is one of the episodes where I kind of like free myself to just like talk about whatever. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. I kind of know, but... And uh, what else? Yeah, I'm on low energy because like I, you know, I expected to get maybe five hours sleep last night, but like... You know, um, I didn't get to sleep until about, I don't know, almost 6. And then, like, at around 8.30, you know, the phone rings, 8.45. And, you know, it's like these, you know, I've got my phone set to, like, you know, um, what you call it, no call, no ID reject or whatever. You know, like, it, these calls aren't supposed to be coming through. I think it's probably a political call. Anyway, so then, you know, I don't think I got to sleep after that. So I think I'm on, like, two, two and a half hours sleep, whatever. So this is like the effects of no sleep on our on our will. You know, it's going to slow me down. Um, all right. So again, this is episode ninety-one, and I'm going to talk about like I mean, some people are getting this that um, that we don't have a free will. That free will is impossible. You know, absolutely impossible. Um, this year, two thousand and twelve. There has been over 30 um, major articles in, in major publications, the New York Times, Time Magazine, The Atlantic, The Guardian, The Telegraph, USA Today, Psychology Today, Scientific American, Scientific American Mind, you know, a lot of coverage, which is like never before in history. And, and this is cool. But, you know, like, you, there's, there's, you know, this is like the biggest thing ever. I mean, like, you got to understand, our, our entire world is entirely deluded about pretty much who we are as human beings. I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, like, you know, we basically think that what we do is up to us when the reality is that everything is like a movie. You know, we're just like actors and we don't even get to interpret our roles. That's how, that's how reality is. And, and it couldn't but be that way. And I guess I should probably explain why. Although I don't, I'm going to devote, yeah, well, no, I don't want to. Well, all right, the basic, the basic reason is causality. And this is what everyone should get. And I can't, I haven't been able to figure out yet why people don't get it. I mean, like, I was talking to somebody last, actually on Monday, this is Friday, um, and they said that, yeah, they get, they understand how causality, cause and effect, makes free will impossible, but they still think that there's some way that we have a free will. All right, so, um, and that's how, that's what everybody says. You know, we have a little free will, whatever, and it, it, it's just impossible. Here, let me, let me go through a brief explanation, causal explanation, then, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. All right, um, everything has a cause. Okay, some people say, well, no, not everything has a cause. In random, in, in quantum mechanics, there is a thing as indeterminism and Heisenberg uncertainty principle, and, you know, and, like, first of all, you know, quantum mechanics and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle doesn't um, say that, that things are random. That's just an interpretation of it. You know, it's called the Copenhagen interpretation, <laughs> and it's, like, it's wrong. But um, because because everything has to have a cause, um, and even if it was right, even if if certain things were like without cause, random, you know, uncaused. I mean, what does that even mean? But, but like, if 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 our decisions, if what we thought and felt and said and did and all, didn't have a cause, then certainly we couldn't be causing them. It wouldn't be up to us. All right, so right there you can eliminate randomness, eliminate indeterminism, 
And you know, you know, this is major because you've got like, for example, there was a, there was a, an article by the American Medical Association. It's on my website, causalconsciousness.com, the website of this show. And they're like, they're trying to refute free will by saying, well, but you know, not everything is causal, you know. And I mean, you, you would think that the American Medical Association would understand that if things aren't causal, the only other alternative is that they, they happen for no cause. And again, if, if, if our decisions, if what we do is happening for no cause at all, it couldn't possibly be up to us, up to our quote unquote free will. And the, the, Amer the American Medical Association, I think it was the Journal of Ethics, um, could get this wrong is like bewildering. But anyway, so like, so now here's the, the, the main reason why free will is completely impossible, it will never be possible, it never was possible, is causality. Everything happens for a cause. Things don't just happen, you know, there's, and, and a cause is like, um, all right, in terms of our brain, let's explain this in terms of our brain. We may, I make a decision, right? I just like said what I just said, right? That, that was my decision to say what I just said and I'm saying what, I, what I'm saying. Okay, now like the cause of what I just said was my brain state, the state of my brain immediately preceding what I said. Okay, because like our brain evolves from state to state to state. The neurons, you know, travel through their, you know, passageways and all, all this neural activity. And the brain is kind of like a machine. It's like it's, you know, it's causal. So what happens is, all right, I make a decision, I say something, and then the, the cause of that is the brain state immediately before I said it, okay? And it comes a moment before, right? And then the, what's the cause of that? Now, you got to remember, right, if everything has a cause, that means that um, the cause of what I say or what I do or what anybody else says or does or thinks, whatever, is going to have a cause, okay? So there's the, 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 what I say, then there's a cause of that, and then there's a cause of that, okay? In, the, in this case, we're, you know, we're dealing with brain states, so it's the state of the brain immediately before that preceding, immediately preceding cause of what I said. And then there's a cause of that cause, which is like the immediately preceding brain state before that. And then you go back. This goes back moment by moment cause by cause by cause and it's like cause and effect so what happens is like you've got one cause creating an effect like three moments before my decision that cause created an effect and that effect then becomes the cause of the subsequent the next effect and that effect becomes the cause of the next effect right cause and effect so all right so you, you, you've got this chain of cause and effect and you can't escape it. You can't escape it. Whether you call it brain states, uh, the state of the universe, you know, everything has a reason. You can't escape causality. Um, so it's, it, it goes back in time, moment by moment by moment. And it goes back. Okay, um, think about it. These moments are turning then into minutes, into hours, into days, into weeks, into you know, because like that's how reality pro progresses, cause and effect, cause and effect. And, if, you know, eventually you realize that um, brain states have, in this case, brain states, you know, our brains, once we're born, even before we're born, they never turn off. It's always like one brain state leading to the next, to the next, to the next. So if we take our, our causal chain back to whatever we're saying in the present moment or doing, you know, this cause and effect chain goes back to before we were born, you know, when we're in the womb and all, when the, and it, it even goes back further than that because like, you know, ultimately, you know, when we're conceived, you know, we've got, you know, the brain at, at one point isn't even there, you know, there's like, you know, an organism without a brain. So this cause and effect chain, even there's a cause to that, to our brain being formed. And then there's a cause to like, you know, to our, our entire being, so, and then there's a cause to that, and then, so basically what I'm saying is like, this chain of cause and effect easily goes back to before we were born, and that this is the chain of cause and effect to any decision, to every decision, so it goes back to before we were born, back to before our parents were born, before the planet was created, and 
at least as far as to the Big Bang, okay, like, you know, 13.7 billion years ago. We don't know what happened before that, but the, the thing is, like, that Big Bang, that explosion in the universe, the creation of the universe back 13.7 billion years ago was the cause to everything that's happening in the universe after that, okay, including everything we, we say, do, and all that. Okay, now, that's pretty basic. That is like basic and that's like so amazingly irrefutable. You can't refute that. You know, you can't, you can't logically refute that. And uh, so like, you know, after 91 shows and I've got my co-host, we're like racking our brains trying to figure out how to reach people with this. Uh, we're trying to figure out how do people don't get, you know, how do, how do people not get this, you know? And, and you know, we're, we're very, very quick to say, hey, you can't blame them you can't blame us for not getting it because like if we had a free will we would get it but um but no no my main point my main point so all right so now you understand how 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 completely impossible free will is and free will you know just i, I usually do this you know at the beginning of each show i forgot this time free will is that we we'd be able to choose do think say feel whatever we want regardless of anything that's not in our control okay so so obviously this process of cause and effect isn't in our control because like it goes back cause by cause moment by moment to before we're born obviously what, what happens before we're born is not in our control I mean what is this like before the whole entire human race existed so obviously not in our control all right um, so so I lost my train of thought. So oh yeah. So like people people are getting this. I mean it, it you know again those 30 landmark um articles um the first landmark art article I think was a cover story uh April I think 15th through the 22nd of 2011 by the British um weekly science magazine um New Scientist. And I think the title was Free Will, The Illusion We Can't Live Without. But, you know, they're on the cover. First time ever a magazine ran a cover story refuting free will. You know, it says it's an illusion. Okay, then, then um, it was followed up by an article in 2012 by Scientific American Mind. You know, Scientific is one of the most prestigious, popular science magazines in the world. Uh, um, I think it was called... Who's in control? How physics and biology dictate your quote unquote free will. And basically it was like, you know, refuting free will. So like it's getting out there, okay? And um and this is good, but like, you know, we're trying to figure out how how do people not get this? And yet again, you can't blame us. You know, if we had a free will we would understand this. And, you know, um part of it is like, you know, it could you know I don't know. I'm thinking part of it is like we're all raised religiously, you know, or most of us. And, um, you know, like when you're really young, you know, they tell you, well, what you learn in church or synagogue or in the temple or mosque or whatever, you know, you got to pretty much believe that because if you don't believe that, if you don't believe certain things, you know, like Jesus is the Messiah or that, you know, Moses was a great prophet or whatever. If you don't believe that stuff, like, you know, Basically, you're told kind of subtly that you're at risk at suffering, you know, to suffer for the rest of eternity. I mean, this is like, with a, I don't know how young they tell kids this, you know, but they tell kids this. I mean, who knows, maybe at four or five years old, you know, because at that age, they're, they're like reading them these really like, you know, um, these fairy tales and stuff, you know, with witches eating kids and stuff, you know, the Aesop's fables. But, um, so that's one guess. One guess is like people, like, you know, if you condition a person so, um, that's so young, you know, before a kid's, you know, cognitive analytical abilities have, have developed and you tell them, you know, this is reality, you know, you don't have free will, nobody has free will, um, you tell them a kid, you know, that young an age, and, you know, 
it's hard for maybe some people because because all right i i question everything i you know my parents tell, told me stuff i said oh yeah prove it to me a lot of people aren't like that a lot of people you know their 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 father might say to them you know um this is the way it is and you say you know you say to the, uh, the father well why is it that way and the father might say i don't care why so it's, it's that way because i say it's that way and and i think maybe some of us are, are raised that way you know not to question authority in a sense and in this case the church or, or parents or authority whatever but um another another reason why people aren't getting it. and we did a show about this actually um well yeah show number 87 it aired um on september 27th which is yesterday <laughs> just aired yesterday i'm taping this on the 28th and um yeah, another, another we, we were theorizing that another reason why people may not get this is because, like, you know, there are different kinds of intelligence. There's emotional intelligence, okay? And then there's, like, intellectual intelligence. Intellectual intelligence is kind of like the intelligence that IQ tests measure and SAT scores and all that stuff. Emotional intelligence is people that, you know, they know people. They know emotions. They can read people. They can you know they can tell you what you're feeling why you're feeling and stuff you know and like the curious thing is ordinarily this isn't a, a hard clad rule but ordinarily if you're really really smart iq wise you're not all that smart emotionally that's like me i'm kind of like an emotional idiot sometimes <laughs> but then the, the, the converse is true if um if you're really good at, at knowing people and stuff like that you just weren't born with with you know very very strong analytical skills um and now that's you know right <laughs> that's kind of like an explanation but you know causality is very simple i mean come on causality is one plus one equals two everything has a cause every decision has a cause there's a cause to whatever you know it, it couldn't be more simple so like you know it's got to be more complicated than that um Another another kind of reason we're speculating that's related to this like different kinds of intelligence kind of thing is that some people have really good memories, okay? Regardless of whether you're like intellectual or emotional or whatever your you know, your type of intelligence. And you know, some people get by in school and in life through learning stuff, remembering it, and then retrieving it and applying it. And, you know, when you think about it, that's what school is so much about. That's what the SATs are about. That's what tests are about. So that's how people, like, you know, get by. And, and, and then, you know, some, some people like myself, I don't have a very good memory. You know, I really don't. I mean, I remember some things. But, like, for those of us who don't have really good memories, we've got to understand things, you know, because they're not going to like, you know, when we learn something, it's not going to be in there. We're going to, we have to understand that at a deeper level. Okay, so then like, so I'm theorizing that a lot of people, again, get by through school and life and all because they have good memories. They never really develop their analytical skills, their critical thinking skills, and that's why they don't get it. And and it's kind of unfortunate. And this is, you know, like going back to this like emotional intelligence and intellectual intelligence thing. It's kind of like uh, an unfortunate ir irony because in life, for example, let's say you're going to be like the editor of a prestigious science magazine or science institution. If you're like a real bookworm, if, if you're really, really super smart, but you have like you know, again, because the, the intelligence and the emotional intelligence are really like kind of like mutually exclusive to an extent. If, you, if you're not really good with emotional intelligence, you're not going to get that job. So the, the editors of these like, you know, major science magazines that should have gotten this whole free will thing right decades ago, you know, are very likely people who are very good. You know, naturally, they, they know their stuff. You know, probably because they have strong memories, probably never had strong analytical skills. And they're, they probably have much better emotional people skills, emotional intelligence than 
much smarter people intellectually who would get this. So the people at the top, and this, this is across the board, this is like, you know, science magazines, businesses, you know, politics, everything. So you've got people running the world, running <laughs> magazines that aren't all that smart sometimes, but they know people. And who knows, maybe for certain things in certain ways that's better. But but for an, understanding the nature of reality, you know that that probably explains a lot, because um, because we've been talking about this nature of human will, kind of like at least um, from the time of the Greeks. You know, certainly through the the Enlightenment for the last two hundred years, easily. You know, philosophers, Kant, Hegel, Mills, Spinoza. You know. These guys have considered it, and um, and it's only now, because of this show, because of my meetup in Manhattan. Actually, I'm not boasting or bragging. This is true. Before um, before I started my meetup in this show, nobody was writing about this. Now everybody is, um, and so like you know, it's taken till now for people to get this. So. Um, so yeah, I forgot what the point of that was. I guess that like yeah, the world has been run by by people who um, who may not be all that sharp intellectually, but kind of know people, and that's how you get into um, leadership po uh, positions a lot. Um, but anyway, yeah, the the point is people are getting this. You know, like you go to YouTube. And people get this, you know, kids get this. You get like 14, 15 year olds explain this better than, um, better than I do sometimes, but <laughs> certainly better than a lot of the academic philosophers. And that's, you know, like, I don't get academic philosophers. There's a, most of them, which is like so surrealistic, most of them believe that everything is causal but we have a free will anyway. It's called the compatibilist free will um, position. And people like William James and other famous people have called it complete, utter nonsense, which it is. Because again, if everything is causal, if everything is run by cause and effect, it is absolutely, completely, irrefutably, <laughs> unequivocally impossible for there to be free will. Yet these, I mean, like, what I'm trying to say, I guess, is like I can understand when when a person, just a regular person, may not get this immediately because you know maybe it takes a bit of thought or something. I don't know. But for for academic philosophers who who spent you know they've gotten their their doctorate degrees you know what's that six seven years of school in philosophy. You know, learning how to critically think. For these guys to not get this is bewildering. Yet, you know, and this is why I think like this this idea of like, you know, our having been brought up religiously and so completely brainwashed, so completely conditioned at such an early age to fear God's wrath, to fear eternal damnation, to to fear questioning authority. You know, I think of a lot of these guys, that's the only way I can explain it, you know, because like what happens is like they need to have a free will and they're, they argue from desire that, you know, they say, well, you know, this world would not. And uh, no, the other thing, it's not just about religion. Like for a lot of people, a lot of these philosophers, the world wouldn't make sense to them if we didn't have a free will. In other words, it is kind of surreal. I mean, just the idea that everything's a movie, that we're, you know, everything I'm saying, everything you're hearing has been destined since the Big Bang, that's a little counterintuitive. And so like these guys say, no, it, it can't be that way. It just like, it would blow their mind too much. I don't know. So, so they argue from desire. They say like, well, you know, we feel like we have a free, free will. We don't even feel how, I'm losing, I gotta slow down. All right, we've got about, Three minutes left. Um, so, yeah, no, no. The academic philosophers, um, there's a few of them who get it. Galen Strawson, Dirk Paraboom, um, Owen Flanagan, I think. Um, but, you know, and the other thing is, like, these, these philosophers, you know, that they write books for other philosophers. I mean, this is, like, the biggest thing ever. You know, it really is. It's, it's, it's definitely the biggest 
topic in philosophy. It's the topic in philosophy that's been most written about throughout the history of philosophy. But, you know, the, the books that are written about this, for the most part, are written by people who are defending free will, these philosophers. And the other part is that they write for other philosophers. You know, so they, they, they nowadays charge 40 50 60 70 dollars for their books nobody buys them nobody reads them i don't even think they read them <laughs> and so like that this kind of explains why free will has not been understood till now so yeah i'm going to just like explain again like in 2010 in april i started a meetup and i live here in white plains but i knew that like you know manhattan is like 35 minutes away by train. So I based it in Manhattan so that when people like in Meetup are looking for a Meetup in Manhattan, they'll just like, they may not join the group or come to our meetings, but every, you know, when they're looking for Meetups to, to go to, they'll see the, the, the name of the, the group, which is Exploring the Illusion of Free Will, and they'll think about it and then they talk about it. So this is how you create a buzz. So that's the same with this show. It's like, you know, it's, it's shown in White Plains and now it's also shown in Manhattan, which is pretty big because it's like, it's like a half a million um, audience there. And, and, then the, and so like we created a buzz and that's why, that's why um, it's like out there now. It's very cool. Um, okay. Again, this show is on every Thursday, 9 o'clock um, in White Plains, Channel 76. You can catch it on the internet. Um, you know, all, all, I upload all the episodes to YouTube. And um, I think that's it. You know, this went pretty well, you know. All right, we've got less than a minute. What else? Um, it's world changing. And, you know, once, once people get everyone gets that we don't have a free will it'll be a completely new world and i've done shows on this a much much better world because we won't blame ourselves you know we won't like accuse ourselves and feel really really guilty and bad about stuff and all i mean we'll we'll still have morality because we still have to do the right thing i've done shows about this you know our understanding we don't have a free will doesn't give us license to just do whatever we want you know and then like and because we're hardwired to seek pleasure and to be good we wouldn't allow people to get away with that. But nonetheless, we would just like, we would just structure our world and our personal lives so it's much more pleasant for everyone. All right, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.